Good afternoon, everybody. We will get started in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I've got some uh, notes there in the chat. Uh, this is being recorded, um, so uh, please keep your microphones on mute. And uh, if you have any questions, please just enter those into the chat. We'll be uh, circling back to those at the end for a Q&A session at the end of the uh, presentation. So feel free to leave your questions in the chat, and uh, we'll get started here in a moment. All right, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Philip Shockford. I'm the past president of Arla. I'm excited again to be able to offer these uh, monthly webinars to everyone uh, during, uh, during the year. Uh, excited to kind of spread, spread our professional development throughout the year and not just at the annual conference. Um, excited today, we have uh, Mandy Bashaw from the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library, the graphic designer there. She's going to talk to us about uh, basic graphic design with Canva. Uh, we love Canva here at the South Arc Library. I'm sure many of you do as well, and it'll be good to get some pro tips on how to use uh, Canva and really level up your graphic design for your library. So, uh, Mandy, take it away. Hi, I'm Mandy Bashaw, and like Philip said, I work at the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library. I am their graphic designer. As of 2019, I started right before the pandemic started. So let's get started. Um, and I will say I use Canva to make this. So you're seeing Canva. Um, so a little bit about me, who I am. I am a mom and a wife and an amateur gardener. You can see my husband and my son. They both hate their pictures being taken. Um, so that's one of very few photos you will see, especially of my husband, most people think that like he and I are getting divorced because we never take pictures together. Um, but we're not. <laughs> uh, we're very happily married. Um, I like to garden. Um, I'm a painter. I'm a social media guru. Um, I'm a crazy chicken lady. I have seven chickens. Um, I'm the second half of Team Andy because um, our PA our manager, her name is Brandy. So we're Brandy and Mandy. Um, I'm a crew, true crime junkie and I love to travel and I love book talk on TikTok. So if you are not on TikTok, you need to get there. Um, there's a lot of great book suggestions um, and there might be smut talk too, if you're into that kind of reading. Um, why should you trust me? Um, because for all you know, I could have just made up my skills and just oh, been some. This and then we'll eat. Oh, someone might need to mute themselves. Okay. Um, why should you trust me? I started my career um, in 2009 as a graphic design intern. And I was hired directly out of college by the company I worked for, and it was Bank and Business Solutions. And when I left, I went from the graphic designer to the senior graphic designer. I worked for 40 salesmen in nine states with hundreds of accounts. I've worked on accounts from, uh, let me think of some off the top of my head. Uh, one of our Memphis salesmen had Oprah. So I've worked on Oprah's, um, artwork. I've worked on artwork for Graham International, their trucking company based out of Dallas, Texas. Um, Maverick Trucking, um, Landers Auto, which is really big in Little Rock and Memphis. Um, Owens Murphy, I designed their logo when they started, I don't know, like 10 years ago. So I've worked for a lot of companies, wide variety, hospitals and whatnot. Um, and I did that for seven years and that is primarily print. So bank and business solutions is a print broker. 
And then in 2015, I got crazy and I decided to open a franchise um, called Pino's Palette, which is like painting with a twist or any of those paint and sip concepts. And in 2016, I was able to, so six months after we opened, I was able to quit my job and pursue that full time. And in 2018, I bought my second location, which was a pre-existing location in Memphis, Tennessee. And I managed those for, for six years. And I did everything, accounting, design work, um, HR, boss. And I did it with um, about as much grace as Zoe Deschanel. So you can imagine. <laughs> And my life's pretty comedic. And then 2019, I was looking to get out and spend more time with my kid because it was 24 seven and I wanted a more normal schedule. And Brandy, my cohort told me about the position opening and I applied for it. And if you don't know anything about the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library, we are not just in Jonesboro. We have eight branches plus a bookmobile, which will act as our ninth branch whenever we get that on the road. Um, so we service most of Northeast Arkansas. Um, so Craighead and Poinsett counties. Uh, fun facts, I probably shouldn't advertise about myself. I do not have a graphic design degree. Um, I'm very open about that. I have a mutt degree is what I call it. It was, I've been here for five years, get me out. Um, I have a bachelor's of arts and art and humanities. The art is graphic design courses. I did work towards pursuing um, a major in that and just wanted to get out. Um, I also have the humanities, which is a theology degree. I am one class short of a Bible preaching degree. Um, I attended Harding University in Searcy, Arkansas. And so that's a fun fact about me. Um, and like most people, I have imposter syndrome so bad, so bad. Um, even though I've done this for over 10 years, I've done graphic design for 10 years, but I still feel inadequate. And I don't know if you, Feel that way, but I definitely do. So if you are working on Canva and social media and think, I don't know what I'm doing, that's fine. I do know what I'm doing and I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing. So that's normal. And what I love about Canva is one, it's on the cloud. So I just got out of quarantine today. Um, my husband had COVID. Me and my son managed to dodge it, which is fantastic. And what I love about Canva is it's on the cloud. It goes with you wherever you go. I have it on my cell phone. I have it on my tablet. I have it on my computer. And I do not have to worry about losing my artwork, which when you're a graphic designer, those files can get really, really heavy. They can get very, very large. You can't email them all the time to yourself. So Canva has been a godsend during the pandemic. So I 100% love it and recommend it. And it just makes things easy. I'm also a total control freak. Um, like organized chaos. Like you can tell from my desk, it is organized chaos. So those are some things that I probably shouldn't advertise but I guess it makes me a real person. So when we talk about Canva, the main thing, first thing you do when you start your account, if you haven't done it already, you're gonna upload all your brand information. So I don't know if you guys have brand information. You should have a branding guide. Um, and if you don't, that is a good thing to start. And um, you can reach out to me at any point and I will walk you through the process and how to make a branding guide. This is part of it. I keep it printed on my cube. So I know what colors we're using. Um, I know what fonts we're using, um, logos, how to and not to use the logo, all that good stuff. So when you go on your homepage in Canva, you can click on brand kit. And so in there, you're gonna find logo, colors, and fonts. 
or typefaces. Typeface is the professional word, fonts is normal people words. Um, you will want to upload a PNG of your logo with a translucent background. So you can see like this is our logo mark. That is the professional term for it. It is the book that we use to represent our brand kind of like, I don't think y'all can see my mouse, but I'm pointing at stuff if you can. Um, but we do it with a transparent background. So that way we can paste it on top of stuff and we don't have to do special clicking maneuvers. Um, yes, yay, there's a pointer. So we don't have to do clicking maneuvers to trace around the letters, okay? Um, and to get a transparent PNG, if you have Photoshop, that's the easiest way is to drop a logo, whether it be an EPS, a JPEG, whatever, cut out the background and then save it as a transparent PNG. You will always need a full color version of your logo. So it in all of its glory, how it's gonna be, you'll want a white version. You see the white version of the Arlo logo, of our logo mark, and then the public library logo. And then you'll want a black version. And then you'll want your logo mark separate and you'll want all three of the same files. You'll want it in full color, white and black. This is the most versatile. And once you op upload it into um, Canva, it's just gonna stay there and it just makes all your design work super duper easy. You're gonna upload your brand colors. So you can see these are my colors on my branding guide and it's got CMYK, RGB, PMS and hex you will use the hex colors, that's H-E-X, hex colors. And those are gonna have six numbers, okay? So like our blue is 005891. If you don't know what your hex colors are, you can go to a website and um, upload your logo and click on it and it'll um, show you those numbers and you just Google it. I just Google it anytime I need it. Um, and so you'll save those in there. So they're always on record and you will upload all your colors. So for us, we have layers of colors. We have black and white, which are pretty normal standard uh, logo colors. And then we have our two blues. So if you, I'm trying to see if I can find it. Um, we have a light blue and a dark blue. Um, and these are standard blues. The light blue is a 292, which means nothing to you. But in print world, it's a standard blue um, that we've changed to process blue. And so when you go to order like promotional products, they'll talk about reflex or process blue or not. And I'm talking way outside your comfort level, but you're going to upload all these colors. And then you're going to do, and those are our main colors. So we have black, white, blue, and blue. And then we have some secondary colors. These are colors that we're gonna accent with. So think about designing your house. I really like grays and blacks, matches my soul, but then I have fun pops of colors to give it a little more life. And that's what these secondary colors are. And you're gonna make them stationary. So we have a yellow that we use. We have a blue that we use. We have a teal and a purple. And these make a really nice color scheme for our artwork. And so when we go into Canva and we use templates, we always change to those colors. So you'll wanna upload those and those will show up when you pull up your colors, those will always show up and they are you know, stationary. You'll also wanna upload your fonts. So at here we use Helvetica New, which is a pretty standard font. Um, Canva, because it's a corporation, does not actually own the rights to Helvetica New. And so they have a font called Helvetica-ish. It has ish at the end of it. Um, and so that's what I use 90% of the time is because eh, Canva, most of the stuff's going up on the internet for us. So I, I want it closed, but it's okay if it's not an exact match. Um, and then we also have a font called Thurston, which we've downloaded from the internet and I have uploaded into Canva and um, set that as our children's typeface. 
So you can use theirs and set their font as your font or typeface, or you can upload your own. And so there's options for both of that. But once you get this set up in Canva, it makes designing so much easier and making it look a million times professional. And if there's any of that, write down the question. I promise I will answer at the end. Um, oh, I went the wrong way. There we go. Nope, wrong way. Okay, so you might find people that won't say this. I'm gonna tell you, use the templates. Just use them, own them, use them. They are created for convenience. And if you are not a graphic designer, do not feel like you have to be. Absolutely use them. You can delete, you can alter, you modify. They are there for a reason and they look beautiful. Just update them to fit your library. Okay, so don't be afraid to make it your own. Use your template as your base guide um, and just make it easier on yourself. It's not worth the headache. You know, just take five minutes and knock out you know, a, a Facebook post or an Instagram post. Make sure you add your logo so you'll notice in all of my slides, we have the Arlo logo. Cause technically I'm doing this for Arlo, right? So I'm gonna use the Arlo logo in each one of my slides. This one's gonna be on the left. The next one's gonna be on the right. And you can see this is a YouTube screen that I have created for our story times. And you'll notice our logo mark is right here in the bottom right corner where my text is. This brands it. This makes it so if someone steals your art, it has your logo on it. It's going to look really dumb if they steal your logo, right? So this brands it. It makes it your own. You have, you know, um, you branded it. So make sure that you add your logo. Make sure you use your color. So this is our light blue. This is our dark blue on it. And then this is one of our former librarians. She has um, since left and pursuing bigger and better ventures. And we're really excited for her, Miss Rebecca. And then this is the story that we're going to, the book that we're going to use. So use templates, customize it, make it your own, change the colors, because once you add these things to it, it's not gonna look like the template anymore. Um, so that's my second tip. White space is great space. And I say this because a lot of times, especially if graphic design is not your profession, if this is just something that is an added task to what you're doing at work, um, you just want to fill the entire space. You don't need to do that. You can have white space. So in this screen, it's not actually white. It's the light blue space. Notice there's a lot of it and that's okay. It's not a bad thing. Do not feel like you have to fill every, everything. Yes, Robin, you should be seeing my slides. Can you not see my slides, Ms. Robin? Can anyone else not see my slides? Okay. Okay. All right. You found them. Cool. All right. So make sure you leave, leave plenty of white space. You'll notice again, there's a hierarchy. There is my logo. There's the name of my organization. There is a headline. Did you know? And then there's the subject matter. And then there is plenty of space around it. You do not have to make everything the same size. You do not have to make everything take up the space. So white space, good thing, okay? <clears throat> so something I touched about in the last slide, and it's tip number four, tell a story with layers and hierarchy. So you'll notice in each one of these segments, there is a headline, there is font that is the biggest. So in this YouTube header, it's all about me. In this one for um, Facebook, it says, did you know? 
And then this one is our take and make bath bomb kit. And so there are layers that draw your eye in and it should be the most important and work your way down. We still have the logo everywhere. It's off to the side. So we're still having representation. We're still having it branded as people can look at it and say, oh, that's the Jonesboro Public Library. Um, and it makes it easy for the eye. Did you know what materials we keep? Oh, it's from Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library. Oh, it's take and make bath bomb kit. Oh, that sounds fun. When can I get it? Oh, February 19th. So there's a layer, it tells a story and it directs your eye through the piece of art. And this E is driving me nuts and there's no space there and it bothers me. I just wanna point that out. <clears throat> so tip number five, and I will preach it, you know, until the cows come home. Don't forget to make it your own and don't forget to make it represent your library. Um, you can see we have the Libby logo. You can see Bob Tartar, he comes every year. We have books from our collection. This is Miss Jolene and it's from a Yuzu. These are um, samples of, of a craft kit that we gave out. So add these elements, um, Jolene and the, the drawing, I cut out the background. If you don't know how to do that, you don't have to do that. Um, Canva has some really great um, basic photo manipulation tools that you can use and feel free to use those and just plop them in the template or um, add that element to a template to make your own. Um, so this one is, I, I wanted to show you a campaign that I'm working on and it is one that I've done primarily in Canva. And so this is tip number six. So a lot of times, especially in graphic design, you will be asked to create a logo. And so if you're a professional, you're gonna have the Adobe suite, um, but not everyone's a professional. And Canva, you can build logos in Canva. And so with our Love Your Library campaign, I built 99% of this campaign in Canva. Uh, the logo, this Love Your Library was created in Canva. Now you can see, oh, build a campaign from the ground up is what tip number six is. Um, so this logo, the Love Your Library logo, I created it 100% in Canva as a heart from Canva. These books are from Canva. Now I customized it and I made it my own. I've gone in and I have made the colors, my library colors. I have added, you can see the little book logo all over these books um, so that it customizes it and it makes it our own. So you can do everything you need to do in Canva. So this is the all black version of our logo. This is um, the logo that we used on a t-shirt right here. These are um, yard signs that we have created and that we are handing out to our patrons to show representation for the library. Um, this is a social media banner for our Love Your Library weekend. So do not feel like you cannot create everything you need in Canva. Um, I will say you will want to become familiar with different file types. So a lot of what I produce for social media, I download as a PNG because I upload directly to social media and it's higher quality, it'll look crisper on your, um, your, your whatever device you're using to view social media, um, whereas promotional items, so these are pins, shirts, the yard signs, you will download as an SVG, which is a vector file. And so this is getting technical, this is getting into pure 
graphic design terms, there is raster and then there's vector art. Vector art is this logo right here. Raster art, hold on a second, I will show you. Raster art is basically a photograph. So this photograph, if I blow it up to be the size of a building, it's going to be stretched out and it's going to look pixelated. You ever look at something and you're like, wow, that's really pixelated. That looks terrible. That's raster art. Vector art is scalable. You can make it itty, 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 and then really, really huge, and it's going to maintain its integrity. And that is a very complex, um, it, it's that is the core of graphic design is knowing those two things. And um, it's a very complex thing. And I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. But um, your promotional items, logos, um, anything that's going to be printed needs to be vector art um, as much as you can. Obviously, like a photograph is never going to be vector art. That's always going to be raster. Um, you cannot make this vector. Um, even though some graphic designers will tell you they can, you, you can't. Um, and then, um, you know, we're going to use raster art for social media, because that is the only formats that Facebook and um, Instagram and all of that. So vector art is scalable art and it is typically created in Illustrator, but Canva does have an option. It's this logo right here. The Love Your Library logo is going to be vector art. Now, when you download it as a PNG, what Canva will do is turn it into raster art, which is basically the equivalent of a photograph. Does that make sense? <clears throat> But you can build your entire, it's raster, it's R-A-S-T-E-R, -E raster, yeah. Um, but you can build your entire campaign in Canva. And I really recommend it. You want to stay on the platform that you're comfortable with. This is easy. You can make things and customize things on your own. And so it, it is, it's graphic design. It, it's these these are big girl graphic design one <laughs> terms so uh, <clears throat> tip number six build your whole campaign from the ground up so i wanted to show you some of the pieces of art that i can spot in my community that were created in canva so the Children's Clinic is a pediatrician's office here in Jonesboro. And these top two um, posts are their Facebook posts and they are created in Canva. And I can tell because of the templates that they are using. But like I said, for continuity to show their brand, um, they are using the same color pink you can see the same color green and purple and blue in their work. So it's telling a story, it's showing their brand, but it's a template and they've just made it their own. And you'll notice their logo is in every single one. Um, and I love their stuff. Their stuff is super cute. And like I said, it's super easy. Canva businesses are using it. This is a doctor's office in Jonesboro and they are, feel very comfortable to use it. I was looking for a post from um, Reese Witherspoon's Hello Sunshine book club. I really love Reese Witherspoon. She's one of my favorites and I love what she has done for encouraging the general public to get up and get reading again. She recommends really great books. Um, her social media group for Hello Sunshine, the book club, uses Canva in 90% of their posts. Um, so this is, you know, a very cheap, high quality product. 
that I don't want anyone to feel afraid to use because big companies, public companies are using them. And also little ones like the children's clinic in Jonesboro is using them. Um, with KidSpot, you can see this. This is also a Canva template. Like I said, white space is great space. Their logo is way too big on this piece. And I don't mean that to be just like hateful. I'm just trying to point it out. And even this one for the children's clinic, it's overpowering and you're losing like Jonesboro and Marion in the kid spot um, for their locations. So if it were me, I would make that smaller so it, it makes it easier to read. You're not reading over the snowflakes and it's not overpowering. And you're kind of losing some of that hierarchy that I talked about. So it makes it difficult to read. Um, so these are just posts in our area that I thought I would point out. Um, questions. And if you wanna see any of this, I can um, take it out of presentation. Okay, the differences between free and pro versions. So we have the pro version of Canva and we get it for free because we are considered a nonprofit. Um, so I would, I would like to point out three variations. So if you're a public library and you are considered a nonprofit, they have a program that you can sign up for. You just Google it. I don't remember the exact link. It's kind of out of the way uh, where you can sign up as a nonprofit and get the pro version for free. So and then you get it for up to 10 email addresses. <clears throat> I don't think you have to be a 501c3. I don't remember having to enter that. Um, and if you do, you might talk to your friends of the library. Our friends of the library are a 501c3. And so a lot of times um, to save us money, they will let us use their 501c3. Yeah, um, so we, we have the free version of the pro version of Canva. The pro version of Canva titles you to more pictures, more templates, more um, elements, um, more fonts that you can use. Um, the free version limits that, um, but I do not believe that it limits the amount of work that you can create. I only used the free one for like two days, two and a half years ago. Um, and the pro version, I believe, is a very, very affordable rate. Right? I want to say it's under 20 bucks a month. I could be wrong, but it, it's very, very affordable. So even if... Um, you know, you can't get the, the nonprofit free version. Um, it, it's a very affordable one. Okay. There was an earlier question, I'm gonna scroll back and look about uh, whether or not you could take the, remove a background from a photo in Canva. Yes, there is an option to do it. I believe it's only in the pro one. I have never used it because again, the perfect, I'm, I am a professional graphic designer. So for me, it's easier just to pop something in um, Photoshop and cut it out than it is to try and figure out a new piece of software. Um, that's probably the lazy way of doing it, but it's, that's just what's easier um, for me personally when it comes to would remove Let's remove BG. If you can download it as a PNG, is it Janine? Um, I believe you, as long as you can download it as a PNG that's transparent, it should work with Canva. Okay. So I'm gonna show you where some of these things are really quick. Can y'all still see my screen? Yeah, okay. So 
this is the main page of Canva. You can see a bunch of our, bunch of my designs on here. Sorry, I know I'm scrolling really fast. So this is again, the free version. So under tools, there's the content planner, um, which I recommend. I'm, I use a paper planner to control all my content. Everything that's highlighted is social media posts in my planner. Some people can use a computer screen. I have to write it down. So you can use the content planner and it gives you ideas to plan your social media content. Great tool. It doesn't work for me, but that's just my personality. If it works for you, I think that is a very helpful tool. Next up is the brand kit. So you can see here my brand fonts, my library colors. Again, you can see my two main blues. I have a yellow, the black and white, my green, purple, and my teal. These are my secondary colors. Um, you can see I have uploaded two fonts and I use these for our children's department so that everything tells the same story and has the same brand. Um, you can see my logos. And then you can come in and see my designs reflect these colors. And so some I use templates and some I do not. But you can tell they all tell a very similar story and they all make cohesive designs. And so like Veterans Day, absolutely used a template for that and then just slapped on my logo um, to make it quick and easy. Um, but other ones I have made my own. And so like this one, I used their photo and then added my own text to it. Yes, yeah, so social media, you can, if you look on this drop screen right here, this is, you can download, you can share a link, you can present, you can record. You can hook it up with your Instagram business account, your Facebook page. Yes, hold on. Uh, Facebook page, Twitter, you can email it, you can save it in a folder, you can send it in a Facebook group. Oh, Pinterest, I didn't realize it linked with Pinterest. Um, I haven't looked at these in a while. Slack, LinkedIn, there's so many platforms that it partners with. So it, it's just a really great, great resource. Um, you can even save it as a template. So if you create a template that you just love, you can save it and use it and customize it later. Um, what's the next question? Jen, for holidays, yeah. So let's say I'm gonna start a new one. I'm gonna delete this. So say I'm gonna work here. Let's look Mardi Gras. So they don't have any templates for Mardi Gras. Uh, let's find another one. Let's do Valentine's Day because that's coming up. So you will see on the left, all these templates for Valentine's Day. And I've got time, so we're gonna customize one. So here's Valentine's Day. This is not my font and say we're gonna do it for my children's. So I'm gonna come here and you will see these are recently used fonts. These are the fonts in the actual file. So, and this counts as the whole file. So up here and then this one, these are recently used. This is my brand font. And these are my uploaded fonts. So I'm going to do Thurston. And then I can go up here and do all caps. 
And I want that to be a little bit bigger so you can make it bigger here or spread it. And say I wanted to make this a different font. Well, that doesn't fit. So let's stretch that out. And then you can even control the line spacing. And this isn't going to be beautiful by any means. So um, let's see what colors I've got. If I can think up here, Mandy. So you can see all the colors. This is the document colors. You can see library colors. You can see photo colors. These are default colors. And then if you want to use a color that's not there, you can go here and just create a color. And you see these six numbers down here? That's the hex color. So this is the web color. And if you want to write it down and use it, you can use it in other things. But the nice thing about Canva is, is once you change it, um, I'm gonna make that one. Um, it, it stays inside the document. And these little lines, it, um, these are guides and I love it because like this one down the middle says, hey, that's centered girl. Love that. It's just very intuitive and it's nice. Again, background color, I can come here. And then if you stay on the straight line, it still stays in the same color family. It's so easy. It's so easy and I love it. And you can incorporate different elements. So you can go to the elements and say, I don't really like those hearts. I wanna use different ones. And you'll see a bunch down here. Some are videos. Um, anything that you can change the color for is considered vector art. And some of them will tell you, like you see that text right there where it says free, that's gonna be usable by the free version. And see this one with the crown and it says pro, that is a pro one. So that's one you would have to pay for or have the pro version of Canva to use. Um, and so I'm gonna use this because it's, oops. The only thing I don't like is it doesn't put everything on top. Sometimes it puts it in the bottom layer, which is a little obnoxious. And so this is what I mean by customizing it and making it look like your own. Is go in, make the colors look like your brand. Like I said, this isn't not going to be my best work. I'm just trying to show you how it works. <clears throat> but what I love about it is it, it just makes design work easy and I don't have to draw everything by hand. And then to add your logo, you will see this page right here. It's called Uploads. And these are all things that I have uploaded. That is a COVID test, not a pregnancy test. It just looks like a pregnancy test. Um, but you can see book titles, like you can come down here and, you know, do a selection of books, which this is mental health, but you know, we'll pretend. And like I said, you can edit the image. So if you hit edit image, you can change the brightness. You can change the contrast, which is something that we do in Photoshop. There's different filters. I wouldn't go too crazy, but there's options. You can even add a glow to it. 
which makes it look like it's standing out. You can add a drop shadow, so it's kind of to the side. It's just a really great tool for graphic designers and non-graphic designers to be able to um, create content and do it and have it look well done in a fraction of the time. Uh, so if I were really doing Valentine's, I'm just playing with this. Let me show you some of my real Valentine's posts. Um, so this is one that we are doing for our adults. And you can see the logo is in this bottom right hand corner. I went for easy. This was a template. This art here in the center was provided by our children's department. Um, we were very lucky that we have a bunch of artists on staff. So they created this PNG for me. And um, this time I just I just went for um, frilly girly and added the logo to it. Um, let me see if I can find a, another holiday. So this one, we're doing the Festival of Lights. Um, and this is a lantern making workshop. And it is a template and I added this and I changed out all the colors. And so you'll notice I changed the blue to my brand of blue and made the light blue also my brand of blue. And then the yellow that was in it, our brand yellow. So my general rule is like, if there's a color and you just really love the template and you want to keep it the way it is for the most part, like say I'm making a design for Arla and it's a Valentine's Day one, instead of using the color red that the template has, I'm gonna use Arla red because then that automatically brands it to Arla. <clears throat> And some other templates. Um, let me see some other ones that I use that I know I used a template for. <clears throat> okay, this one was a template. And so I changed it to my brand blue, but it's not for a holiday, it's just for um, social media posts. I print them at my library, the same I print them. We have a copy machine that I use to print here, but you can send it out. Um, so if I was gonna send this sign, this is our sign, it's in our colors. If I was gonna go to download and print it, you will see under the download, there's a PNG, there's a JPEG, there's a PDF, there is a print PDF, an SVG, MP4, and then a GIF. So if I'm gonna send this to a printer to be professionally printed, I'm gonna to go to the PDF print. And then you can add crop marks and a bleed. And so what a bleed is, again, I'm gonna use my photo of my son. When I go to print this picture, I'm gonna print about an eighth of an inch onto each side. And so what that allows the printer to do when they go to cut it down is to trim it. And when they trim it, there's no white space. There's no edges on it. Um, let me see. Now, when I print in house, I can't print with a bleed. So you get these white edges. A bleed, this white edge on a printer they, they print it at any size. So like if I'm using a digital printer and I'm printing this on oversized paper, they're gonna trim it down to this edge. And so the bleed gives it a little more room. So when they trim it down, you don't see any of this white. Um, so when you send anything to a professional printer, that's like what's on my screen, um, you will want to do crop marks and a bleed. 
um, unless it's a white background. But if it's colored, full colored, you, you need to have that bleed. And then um, the PNG is what I use for social media. And then again, if I'm doing vector work, that SVG is what you'll use. And like a Cricut uses an SVG. Um, most printers like for promotional products use an SVG. And so it, it makes it easier for them to use. And that's getting to a more technical side of graphic design. Um, but if you've never had an intro to Canva, um, they just have so many great templates. You can see an email header is up here. <coughs> they have logo, they have cards, invitations, story on Instagram and um, Facebook. They have TikTok templates, they have the YouTube thumbnail. Um, and as a graphic designer, I love not having to think about what size is this because everything on every platform is a different size. And so I can just come in and use the template and then download it. You can even create Facebook stories. You can create TikToks in here. Um, you can edit YouTube videos. Now it is very basic editing. It is not what you want to do if you're trying to do a, a pro professional video editing, but it, it can do some basic too. And you can see the video template right here. And then they also have some free stock stuff. So. <clears throat> Any other questions while you still got me? I hope this is helpful. Um, Absolutely, that was fantastic. And I, I think the uh, the demo is probably the best part, getting to see <laughs> how it works. Yeah, yeah, any, absolutely. Any more questions for Mandy? All right. Well, thank you, Mandy, for doing this on uh, short notice. Again, I, I appreciate it very much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for uh, joining us today. And uh, please stay on the lookout for more uh, exciting webinars every month um, as we go through the year. Uh, lots, of, lots of good stuff coming, I hope, and, and I, think it'll be, I think it'll be great. So thank you all for, for joining us. I appreciate it.